Pasensya na. Okay, mag-start na lang tayo dito. All right, uh, not much naman doon, all right? So morgue, so we have, this is the typical or this is the ideal uh, morgue setting. No, We have shower and dressing area. Usually post-autopsy, syempre after mo autopsy, after kang dug duguan, there should be a shower and a dressing area. We also have a washroom preparation for the cryostat in cases na mayroong kailangan ng immediate diagnosis kasi kukunin agad ng pasyen, ng, ng relative yung, yung cadaver, no? iuwi agad sa probinsya. Of course, the autopsy area where evisceration takes place, pag sinabi ng evisceration, is the removal of the organs from the body cavity. Okay, and also we have isolation area for high risk cases. For example, in cases of, siyempre sa mga kano, no, pag may TB, takot na takot yan sila. Alright, kaya usually naka-isolated yan siya. Parang rare kasi sa kanila doon. Alright, kaya pag nag-present ka ng mga cases doon sa US or sa mga kaputi, pag may granuloma, TB, tuberculosis, ah, parang manghang-mangha yan sila. Kasi nga, very rare nga din doon sa kanila. Right? And also for mga meningococcemia, right? So sa isolation area, dapat meron. And also the dissection area, remember the dissection area is different from the autopsy area, different from the area where evisceration takes place. Kasi in the dissection area, once na eviscerated na yung mga organs natin, ilalagay natin siya sa dissection area. Where there is detailed dissection, doon na tayo magkakat, magpili ng mga tissues natin na kukunin okay, after evisceration. Okay? And then storage area, okay, kung saan na yung mga body refrigerators. And also there should be a separate viewing area in which the family can view the disease kahit nag-start pa din or nandun pa din kayo nag-autopsy. In, in the setting sa, during my practice sa uh, Philippine Heart Center, Ang nangyayari is that isang view, isang, nandun ang morgue table, nandun yung body ref, magkatabi lang. At the same time, kung, kukuha, kung kukutin na, kukukunin na yung relative ang, ang patay, so ang ginagawa namin, namin kung may autopsy is, ginatakpan namin ang, ng linen yung patay. Tapos, syempre mga chismoso din yung mga taga St. Peter, lolo, ano-ano yan. Okay? Pero, tinatakpan namin para hindi man siya morbid ba pag nakita ng ano pag nakita ng relative to yun pala ay yan yung inoautopsy niyo yun yung ano ko ganun ba all right so next ito yung the ideal autopsy area so this is the morgue table okay this is the section area where evisceration takes place okay parang surgical siya no parang sa OR siya so meron kang light of course meron kang light para makita natin during the dissection kasi mag-oopera din tayo pag sa autopsy yun nga lang patay yung pasyente Alright, so ito yung mga storage area natin where the samples, mga heart, mga brain nandiyan. And also the washing area. Okay? So maganda yan siya na area. Of course, dito sa Philippine setting, hindi man yan ganyan. Okay? And again, basic biosafety principles. So remember that yung cadaver natin is a source of infection. So you need to treat every fluid okay, or every secretions from the patient as infectious. So, anong ginagawa natin? Is that there should, there should be the prevention of puncture wounds, cuts, abrasions by safe handling of needles and sharp instruments. Actually, not only the needles and sharp instruments, but even uh, ribs. Alright? Kasi usually, pag kinat yung ribs, na, pag na-open na yung skin, pag kinat yung ribs, syempre, mga sharp yan siya. Okay? Pwede kang masugatan. Alright? So, sometimes, meron tayong mga gloves na parang uh, puncture resistant na mga gloves pero usually hindi naman natin ginagawa yun or during my my training never ako nakagamit ng ganun actually hindi ko kang alam kung anong itsura nun eh all right again yun safe disposal of contaminated waste so after ng ano pag may mga dugo-dugo yan naka naka Lysol yan siya after okay and of course may contact time para effective yung uh, disinfectant Okay, so the autopsy attire, of course, kailangan may goggles, uh, meron kang gown, and then double, uh, double gloves, meron kang mask, of course. This is pre-pandemic area ha? kasi, of course, kung COVID positive yan, naka, parang naka-full ka, naka suit at the same time, negatively, uh, negative pressure yung room natin para higupin yung whatever yung mga viral particles around the area, alright? Okay, so in special cases, we have fetal death and infant death. Oh, pag sinabi natin fetal death, this means that death of fetus prior to complete expulsion of products of conception respective of 
period of pregnancy. So pag sinabi ng fetus, dapat kailangan siya ma-reach niya ang 20 weeks before siya masabi na fetal death. Pag hindi siya umabot sa 20 weeks, miscarriage yan or nahulugan siya. So ibig sabihin, wala tayong death certificate na ikukomplete. Pero pag umabot siya sa 20 weeks, yung baby tapos namatay, so if fill up natin yung fetal death certificate kasi may separate yun siya na death certificate for the fetus. So remember that one guys ha. Pag hindi pa siya nag-reach, tapos nahulugan, hindi pa siya 20 weeks, hindi pa yun fetus. So that is considered as a nahulugan siya. Alright? Okay, dapat 20 weeks siya. Ano naman yung infant death? Kasi yung infant death naman is the fetus is born, okay, na, na, naluwal talaga siya, and gasping for air, admitted that Nico and eventually died. This is uh, a scenario no, kung sakaling ganun. So na, 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 naluwal siya, nabuhay, and then namatay. So you need to fill up the, the death certificate. Hindi, fetal death certificate. Kasi nabuhay na siya. Ito, intrauterine. Alright, so clear on that. Which of the following is true about anatomic diagnosis? So rendered by clinicians based on clinical data, based on the laboratory imaging studies. Okay, remember this one, guys. I'm going to show you the content of your autopsy report. We have the clinical diagnosis and uh, anatomic diagnosis. Of course, wala dito. None of the above. Kasi magkaiba sila. Okay? Having said that, we have two different diagnoses. No? We have the first, the clinical diagnosis. Ano yung clinical diagnosis? Clinical diagnosis from the word itself, clinical. So you need to clinically correlate the, the condition of the patient. Usually this is rendered by clinicians based on the clinical data and laboratory and imaging findings. While your anatomic diagnosis, of course, anatomic kung ano yung na-dissect mo doon. So this is further divided into provisional versus final diagnosis. Pag sinabi natin provisional diagnosis, ito yung sa death certificate. Meron doon sa likod na post-mortem examination. Pag sinabing provisional, ito yung gross, ano tawag dito? Ito yung gross finding lang natin. Wala pa yung microscopic. Ibig sabihin, inspection pa lang ng mga organs, ganyan. Kasi kailangan pa, pag na-inspect natin, um, ipaprocess pa yun. Kukuha tayo ng sample, tapos i-fix pa yun for quite some time, and then, ipaprocess siya sa, sa tissue processor until makakuha tayo ng microscopic slides. Sa provisional, ito yung immediate ba? So makikita na, for example, meron kang hemothorax, uh, left ventricular hypertrophy, or cardiomegaly, for example. Yun yung mga diagnosis natin na anatomic, which is provisional pa lang. Ibig sabihin, sa ano ba lang, uh, gross findings pa lang siya, wala pa tayong microscopic. Ang pinagkaabi ng provisional with the final diagnosis, ito na yung consolidation ng lahat. No? Meron tayong provisional diagnosis or meron tayong gross diagnosis And then, meron din tayong final diagnosis to include the microscopic findings. Ito na yung after nakita yung mga slides na kinuha sa different organs ng patay. Alright? This is also known as the post-mortem diagnosis. And again, this is only rendered by the pathologist doing the post-mortem examination. Alright? So, very clear on that. The part of autopsy report that explains the mechanism of death of the patient, is it Final diagnosis, clinical abstract, pertinent imaging and lab procedures, microscopic exam, clinical pathologic correlation. The correct answer here is letter E. Okay. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, the autopsy report, we have the final diagnosis, which will show you the anatomic diagnosis after gross and microscopic findings. The clinical abstract, of course, ito yung history and the course in the ward. So ito yung may hirap talaga gawin. Kunwari, may autopsy tayo ng isang pasyente na parang one year na sa ospital kasi nahirapan kami yan kasi we need to uh, document lahat day one, ganyan, ganyan, day two. Diyos ko, parang alam mo yun, parang encyclopedia na yung chart ng pasyente and it will, uh, ano yun, ma mahirap din ito for the pathologist kasi isa-isahin talaga yan including the, the laboratory findings kasi isusulat natin dyan. Okay? okay, ito yung mga pertinent imaging and laboratory procedures sa lahat ng diagnostic procedures done from uh, blood gases, okay, uh, coagulation studies, for example, mga microbiology, histopathology. Okay? Next is your gross examination, the findings during dissection and microscopic examination. Ito yung after tissue processing. And then eventually, the last part of the autopsy report 
is that we explain or we correlate the clinical anthropic findings that explains the mechanism of death. How the patient died, we explain it on the last part of the autopsy report, which is your clinical pathologic correlation. All right. So what are the minimum organs involved for an autopsy to be considered complete? Okay, remember guys, the somatic death, di ba? Ang pag sinabi natin somatic death, ito yung three vital organs na nag-stop ang function nila. And what are these? Of course, brain, heart, and ano? Brain, heart, and lungs, letter B. Correct. All right. Ito, kung may tanong kayo, how much does autopsy cost? Of course, depende ito kung anong klaseng pasyente, kung charity patient ba or service patients or pay patients or ito yung mga mga ano ba may mga ano tawag dito may mga may mga maid talaga may mga maid <laughs> may mga kaya all right sige so pag service of course pag service patient charity patients ito yung usually na uh, in autopsy natin for a clinical audit so wala free of charge yan and service ng pathologist natin and even sa mga gagamitin or mga gastos okay it is paid for by the hospital and the PF of the pathologist is waived. While your pay patients, for example, gusto talaga maano, depende actually kung anong klaseng pathologist, for example, pag forensic pathologist talaga, kung nag-train, depende yun. No? Uh, the PF is dependent on the level of expertise of the pathologist. Okay? And usually, the processing fee natin is around 15 to 20,000. Kasi kailangan mong i-process isa-isa nun, ilo-load mo siya sa ano, gagamit ka ng formalin, gagamit ka ng mga reagents, gagamit ka ng slides, mounting media, ng U-kit, gagamit ka ng uh, glass slides or cover slip. All right? And usually requested by clinicians or family member. Most of the time, family member kasi sila nga yung kumbaga parang habla-habla. Okay? Mag maghabla kasi pinatay ng doktor, pinatay ng ganyan. Okay? So usually sila yung nag nagre-request for that. And remember that according to extent, there are different types of autopsy. We have the, the complete autopsy and the partial autopsy. Pag sinabi natin complete autopsy, of course, aside uh, from the external examination of the entire body, the internal examination includes the removal and dissection of all thoracoabdominal organs, neck organs, opening the head with the removal and examination of the brain. So remember, pag complete autopsy, so kinuha mo lahat ng vital organs which will ano yun, yung vital organs na importante in your somatic or clinical death we have the heart lungs and brain so and dapat ha dapat present sila or inexamine talaga sila tinanggal lahat sila while your partial autopsy ano naman yun examination that forgoes any part of the defined complete autopsy so any of the organs or combination but not all so for example, yung autopsy natin is kinuha lang yung heart at lungs, iniwan yung brain, that is a partial autopsy. Or kinuha lang yung lungs at brain, uh, leaving the heart, that is still a partial autopsy. Alright? So, clear on that. And also, we have special autopsy techniques. We have needle autopsies. Usually kasi ito yung mga patient na ayaw nilang buksan yung pasyente nila. Kasi kawawa, patay na nga, pinatay pa. So anong ginagawa sa needle autopsies? Usually, core needles are used to obtain tissue sample. So gagamit ka ng, ng core needle gun. Okay? So magko-core biopsy ka sa mga organs natin. So, pero usually, hindi lang isang core ang kukunin mo dyan. So madami, like for example, sa liver, kukuha ka ng madaming core. So ang itsura ng chan mo, puro na mga puncture-puncture. Mga, ano, mga Kasi nga, you need to have enough tissue representative of the lesion. Kasi what if a core biopsy mo dun is the normal liver, for example, hindi mo nakuha. Okay? So, hindi mo din siya na, na hit. Okay? Hindi ka din makapag-diagnose kung anong nangyari sa pasyente. Alright? This is done if proper infection precautions can be taken or if all efforts to obtain permission for a regular autopsy fail. So, pag sinabi natin regular autopsy here, uh, yung usual na abubuksan yung pasyente. Alright? So, ang pwede nating successfully biopsy are the solid organs ng liver, heart, lung, and kidneys. What about your endoscopic autopsy? Ito yung mga social na endoscopic. Kailangan mo ng endoscopic guidance, ultrasound guided. Just like in needle autopsies, pero mas mahal lang yung endoscopic autopsy kasi meron ka lang uh, machine. 
uh, to view for the sites sa loob. Alright? O, ganun din siya. Mag, mag needle autopsy or magbabiopsy ka din siya with the use of your endoscopy. Alright? True of Y-shaped primary incision in autopsy. It is the most widely used. Incision is done from symphysis menti to symphysis pubis. Done mostly in partial autopsies. Involves posterior neck incision. Okay? Ito yung aaralin natin, yung mga primary incision. Ano ba yung primary incisions natin? Yung primary incisions natin, these are incisions on the uh, body surface. Okay? On the torso of the patient para ma-expose natin yung rib cage. So we have different incisions according to the shape actually ng letter. So ano yung eye shape or eye shape primary incision? Ibig sabihin from symphysis menti to symphysis pubis. Yung menti dito sa my chin, no? up to the symphysis pubis, sa pinakababa. Later, I'm going to show you a picture. No? While your Y shape, of course, from the letter Y, no? from near acromion process, extending downwards below the breast and across the siphoid process, ito sa, uh, sa sternum natin. Then the, from the siphoid process, back or down to your symphysis pubis. And remember that the Y-shaped incision is the most widely used. Ito yung nakikita natin sa mga pelikula, sa mga si, uh, crime scene investigations sa Sokpo. Okay, we also have the modified Y-shape. Ano naman ito? This includes the incision behind the ear. So, including sa neck, sa behind the ear. No? Sa neck, meron tayong neck dissection na ginagawa. Tapos, uh, behind the ear, and then pag baba niya sa may clavicle, Y ulit siya, just like the, the, the usual Y shape. Okay? Kaya modified siya kasi meron tayong galing sa neck okay, na incision. And also, we, also uh, we have the knee incision, chest only or abdomen only na incision to expose only in cases of partial autopsy, to expose only the, uh, the organs of interest. Alright? Okay, so the primary incision first is the I shape. Okay? So sabi natin, from symphysis menti, from babalu to, to babala. All right? From the symphysis menti to symphysis pubis. Remember, I incision. Capital ito ha. Hindi ito tul, in a small letter na may tuldok. Uh, may I katas may tuldok sa agtang. <laughs> Hindi. Isa lang yung kaline. All right? Next is your Y-shaped incision. So, acromion process, then to the cyphoid process, and then to symphysis uh, chorla. All right. Okay. And also, guys, remember, it is the usual Y shape, no? Okay. Hindi yung cursive, ha? Ganun pa siya. Ay, gusto ko kasi ng cursive, eh. May style na Y. Hindi. <laughs> Ito yun siya dapat. Okay. Some actually would uh, do incision beneath the nipple. Okay. Pero mahirap iyan kung sakali kay Aling Susan, no? Ano yung Aling Susan? Suso sa chan. Okay? Mahirap nag below incision. Nandito ka na sa imong gilid. No? Sa bilbil mo na mag incise So dito na lang, over or above the, uh, the nipple. Kasi yung mga saging breast, hindi na natin makukuha yun. Alright? This is the okay, this is the modified Y incision. So behind the ears, okay, sa clavicle, and then down to your uh, symphysis uh, pubis. Okay, so time check. We all, you know, lang. We have five minutes more, all right? So primary incision. So ito yung mga, uh, yun, pwede din siyang modified siya na parang, ano tawag dito? Uh, tirador, okay? Yan, down here. Okay, we have the chest only, the abdomen only incision, and the knee only incision. Bakit ganito? So may, may type talaga kung paano buksan so that it can expose as much area para makakuha tayo ng organs. Okay, I think guys, we will stop here. No? Dito lang tayo and we will continue later at around 7.30. Um, mabilis na lang ito and I, I'm just going to show you or mag-message na lang ako doon sa, sa, ano tawag dito? sa pointers natin for the MLS 114. Don't worry, mag, may pointers din ako dyan para as much as possible mabutong natin ang grades ta. Okay, see you later.